Um, we're hoping that you will recognize that there's a common um, message streaming through here that thinking critically about the use of tech and looking at the why it's being used in your classroom is critical for it to be effective. And we're hoping that you will also leave with some ideas of how tech can overcome challenges in your inquiry, in your inquiry classroom. So to begin, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Brittany Dupenny, and I teach at Coronation Public School in grade three. My background, I've spent most of my career, I spent five years in full day kindergarten, so I was part of that, um, trans, that transfer over from the old approach to the new approach. So a lot of my um, background knowledge is in that play-based kind of learning inquiry model. Um, and last year I had the opportunity to move forward into grade two and with me I took what I know and I approached teaching grade two with that play-based kind of inquiry model and that's where I kind of started my journey and um, overcame some challenges and it was very difficult to kind of take this more specific curriculum and apply it to a grade two setting um, and I, I found that uh, through that my principal did recognize my risk-taking skills and she asked me to begin kind of doing presentations at the staff meetings to kind of share what I was doing to hopefully get the staff members to kind of jump on board and start taking risks in their classroom and just kind of dive right into the inquiry approach model. Um, and with that, so now I'm teaching grade three and I had, because of the kindergarten approach, we didn't really have much tech in our classroom. I think we had one iPad. Um, so I didn't really have much experience with the tech and to be honest, I was a little uncomfortable with it and how to use it. So last year I didn't really have that as a goal, but this year in grade three, we have Chromebooks and iPads and we have a lot more tech in the room. So I know there's value using the tech. I just haven't figured out how to use it in my inquiry classroom. And luckily my teaching partner, Leah, does have a lot of experience with tech. Um, so from my background, I started, I've been teaching various grades from grade one all the way up to grade six. Um, my approach was more from a junior, um, a junior standpoint, uh, more tech, uh, research-based in terms of applying it to inquiry. So I, unlike Brittany, had minimal hands-on experiences. So in working with Brittany this year, I have a, a three-four split, so being beside each other, we had conversations and we were both starting the grade three structures unit and realizing that we were approaching the same unit at different angles. So with Brittany, it was more hands-on building. With me, it was more questioning and that research approach. So then what we had decided as we started talking together that let's try to merge the two together and see what comes out of it. So then we started on our own journey. So we, the first thing, I already had Google Classroom set up in my, um, in my class and Brittany's in the process of setting up Google Classroom. So I thought, well, let's try Google Forms. Um, I've heard great things about Google Forms. Let's put it up. I'll promote a question to my students. And this is what I ended up learning from Google Forms. It reminded me exactly of a paper and pencil task. It wasn't supplementing the learning. It was simply replacing something that I could have given them as a worksheet. Um, I found that the students had a lack of engagement, so they completed it quickly. Um, I think my kids were done in about seven minutes. Um, I found the answers to be one word responses, so it wasn't that rich thinking that I was hoping to gain from them, and I found that the thinking was very limited, again, with the one word responses. So that Google Forms kind of failure um, became kind of our moment of clarity and sort of helped us really start thinking critically about the use of tech. So wondering why we're using it in our classroom and how can we um, use this to approach inquiry um, in a more effective manner. So we wondered what elements of an inquiry classroom do we find challenging and how can the tech um, help to improve my teaching and the student's learning. So now we're kind of merging the inquiry problems that we find difficult, because inquiry can be very difficult and very chaotic at times, and messy, it's not that nice pathway. So we're wondering what are some of the problems and how can Leah's background of tech kind of help um, bring that and merge it together to make for a more successful learning experience for us and our students. 
So moving forward, we started our own mini increase. So this is where we're kind of at and we're, we're going to share the journey with you. So our question mainly is that we think about every day when we're teaching in our classrooms is how can we use tech to enhance inquiry in the classroom? And from my experiences last year having conversations with staff members about our goal of trying to um, begin inquiry in our classrooms, the challenges that people were telling me that they were experiencing in their classrooms with that inquiry learning was assessment, creating independent learners, provoking student thinking, and responding to the students' needs and interests. So when students are at that inquiry process, they're all, they're all entering their understanding at different points. So these are the four challenges that we're struggling with as, as we embark on the inquiry journey in our classrooms. And we're wondering and we're discovering that tech can really help to enhance or supplement or solve some of the problems that we're experiencing. And we'll explain how. So assessment being one of the problems that we're experiencing in an inquiry classroom, we wonder how do we reach all of our students? How do we plan next steps? How do we determine any misconceptions they might have about curriculum areas? And how can we see what they don't know and fill those gaps? And how do we track all of their learning when all of them are doing different things at different times? What can that look like? And how can tech help us? An app that we started off using is available on every um, board iPad. Explain everything. So this is an example that was used from Brittany's class. So the students um, were taking a picture and then they were able to describe their learning. You see the highlighted words are actually words that uh, in Brittany's class she was looking for. So then she sees that they are demonstrating understanding of the task and is able to assess and move forward based on what she was able to see. Um, we've been using the camera app um, to take pictures of what the student learning um, looks like and we find that, I find that useful in terms of um, figuring out what they know in terms of planning next steps. And an app that I have started, I started using in junior but I've now started using in primary is Sesame Snap. Very similar to Seesaw. Um, I will share an example of one of my students. So this is a student um, in grade three, and he's sharing his thinking. I have the crane inside him, and I put on cardboard on top of my crane, and I tried to tape it on to make it more strong. And I used building blocks um, to make it strong also. I put paper on popsicle sticks to make it stable. show what they've done and then using that on planning time or after school to listen to that and think about that to then plan next steps so like Leah said he lacked some vocabulary and he lacked some um, so she noticed that so to fill those gaps there um, would be um, important for his learning so always listening and observing in an inquiry classroom the next um, challenge that we're finding and I'm still finding as I'm approaching tech um, and being a little bit more open to using it in my classroom is the independence. I often find myself saying, I'll be with you in a minute. Um, 
and telling them, you know, there's one of me and there's 20 of you and I really need you to wait for me to come to you. So I'm finding that I'm saying that all the time and therefore, well, we know that behaviors can start, disengagement can start, and really I'm trying, I'm, my ideas of inquiry aren't really um, being used appropriately and the classroom is not functioning the way I hope. So the classroom sometimes feels a little chaotic. Um, I feel a little overwhelmed. So I'm wondering how can I, um, how do I accommodate all of my students' needs? How do we avoid becoming overwhelmed if each student, um, if each student is doing something different and are in a different approach to their inquiry um, learning? And I'm having difficulty seeing what all my students can do and are thinking if I'm engaged and listening to one group, what's going on around me over here? So how can the use of technology help me find out what those kids are doing when I'm working with a small group? So what we found is that uh, Google Classroom, to generate independence, you can easily um, upload videos. So um, for the threes and the fours, I would go into the free classroom and I would upload videos and websites that they can use to supplement their learning. Um, I like too that with Google Classroom, I can post assignments, templates, charts, rubrics for them to see exactly what needs to be done in order for them to um, direct themselves, do that self-directed learning, and then they submit all their work online. Um, something else we use in our classroom that is promoted independence, we have uh, the classroom website in which I also provide additional links so the students are frequently ac uh, accessing the classroom website, and from there they go into virtual library. Virtual library has been awesome because we have Pebble Go, we have Tumble Books, um, which cater to the students' needs in terms of ability levels. And then something I have, um, again, going back to Sesame Snap. Sesame Snap is very much like Seesaw. It stores everything in one place. Um, when you sign up for your class, the kids are uh, given a QR code. So I posted that in our classroom. The students simply go up with their iPad, they scan the QR code. It takes them automatically to their own portfolio, and they select their area of learning. So, for example, um, grade three structures. So they, under grade three structures, then they can add a snap, um, which is just kind of like a snapshot of their learning. So that is um, a picture, it can be a voice recording, it can be a video where they can explain independently what it is that they're doing. So I can be off busy working in a small group, but I have students independently accessing their portfolios online. Everything is going into Sesame Snap and then I am able to access that because it's all in one spot on my planning time or after school because it's, it's there and available. So, um, the teaching tip for thinking about um, the independence part of, of inquiry is to create a classroom that focuses on the third teacher. So that third teacher phrase was used a lot when I was in full day kindergarten. And basically, um, we're noticing that the tech is kind of becoming the third teacher. So when I'm not able to interact with my students, the tech itself can be interactive for the kids. So if they're wondering about, for example, when we ask them, what do you wonder about when we think about structures, and a child says, I want to know more about bridges, well, instead of me having to be there to give them the information, we could upload into Google Classroom a video about bridges, so when I'm working with my small group, they're off learning about their question that they wanted to know more about. So the tech itself is acting almost as a teacher to supplement their questions help them understand um, misconceptions that they might have. The next challenge that um, teachers have told me, as well as I'm finding myself in an inquiry-based classroom, is the student interest and need. So when we invite students to tell us what they're interested in, then that sometimes can pose a challenge for our teaching because no longer are we kind of driving the, the learning, they are now the ones who get to choose what they want to know about in regards to those big ideas, so structures, for example. Um, so how can we ensure that our students' needs are being met in an inquiry classroom? So not only their interests are being met, but we know that in a grade three classroom, for example, we have um, academic needs that could range from kindergarten to grade five, right? So how can I ensure that my students are um, their needs are being met, how can we reach all of the students since so many of them are wondering about different questions and ideas, how can we help students access developmentally appropriate materials on using tech, and how can we be responsive to their interests. So again, going back to Google Classroom, um, various to engage various students' learning, I have posted 
um, videos up for the students to access on Google Classroom. Um, for example, I had a student in my class, she was wondering if a spider web is considered a structure. So then I posted a video that talks about the seven most interesting structures created by animals, and spider webs were one of them. So then I was supplementing her learning. It wasn't coming from me, it was coming from the learning of from the video, watching the video. Um, a program that I had really used or liked in um, junior, I use now in primary. It's a website, um, free to sign up, it's called Newslia. And I like it because I can find um, updated information, current events going on in the different subject areas. So for science, I can um, go in and find <coughs> articles relating to what the students are interested in. I can differentiate the text. So because I teach grade three, four, not only being a split, I have capabilities of a grade one all the way up to a grade five in terms of reading abilities. So then I can go ahead and select um, an article, place it at a grade two level, and then at the side I've shown a snapshot where you can change the lexile levels. So I can have that particular text um, talking about the same content go all the way up to a grade six reading level. So then I'm differentiating for my students. It also provides language options. Um, so if you have um, students with ESL, or you have ESL students, sorry, in your class, that you can accommodate them that way. Um, as well as I can also select different reading ex expectations from the curriculum. So depending on what we are focusing on in the class, I can also select that article, look at the expectation that I'm currently working on, and then um, pair those. If I've printed off a particular article from Newslia, then I can simply um, take a picture of it with my phone, drop it in a snap burner, it converts it to a PDF file, and I can upload it into their Google Read and Write program mm -hmm. on the computer, and then they can um, work away. So some teaching tips when we're thinking about student interests and needs in an inquiry based classroom is to always put their questions and interests at the center. You could ask yourself what journey will each child take to uncover the big ideas of this unit of study rather than me deciding the way they're going to learn it. So if they want with structures for example, I have some girls that want to learn more about like castles and how like ancient castles and how those Structures are still standing, whereas some of my other students want to know more about the bridges and how how they can hold so much weight. So again, same, different ideas, but all kind of that big idea that allows us to uncover it, and we're finding the tech is really supporting us with that. So provoking student thinking is another challenge that um, teachers have said to me. How, how are you able to get them to think about curriculum topics that maybe they've never ever thought about before, they have very little experience with. I find social studies sometimes is not um, hard for them to connect to. So um, how do we phrase our questions to provoke student thinking? How can we get students to extend their thinking beyond the classroom? So not just in this classroom world, let's make them think outside of the classroom as well. And what are different ways to engage my students on curriculum topics? And we're again finding that the tech can be a really great support in this problem. So again, going back to Google Classroom, aside from being able to post um, assignments and videos and websites in Google Classroom, I have also found that <laughs> the question feature has been very helpful, so I can pose a question. And then I pose it a question for the students that are in um, like the grade three classroom, then they can start conversing back and forth. And I've also discovered it's the way that you pose the question. So if you're kind of approaching it in, in more of a sense like tell me as opposed to what do you know about something, I found that generates more rich thought-provoking discussion than if I simply just approached it as what. Because then that's where how I was getting the one-word responses and the lack of student engagement because they were just interested because they were done in like 30 seconds. Um, the home connections as well that we're finding, um, so the, the Twitter, the classroom website, and then because um, students can share their Google Classroom with their parents. And then if we continue to post open-ended questions, it will stimulate the conversations at home as well. So our journey, um, our inquiry journey of how to merge tech and inquiry to solve some of those problems that we're experiencing in an, in an inquiry classroom continues and we're still trying to figure it out and I'm still trying to get Google Classroom up and running and it's taking me some time because I do need to educate myself before that can happen in my classroom. But we do know that technology is engaging for students. We know that in the 21st century, it's a digital world, and that students have a lot of experience with tech. When I'm struggling with a piece of tech, I'm finding that my students can help me with it. They know more than I even do. So 
So yes, I am a little apprehensive to approach check and put it into my classroom, but ultimately they are problem solving with me along that um, journey. Um, we've learned through our approach of merging her tech expertise and kind of my inquiry expertise that technology has a time and place in an inquiry classroom. So that Google Forms, for example, that kind of became like a, a benchmark for us to say like, that was a fail. I'm not just going to give tech to my kids to replace paper and pencil tasks. I really want to think about why it's being used um, because we know that there's still, there's students still need to speak to each other in person. They still need to hold paper and pencil and they still need to use their hands. So we don't, we, we need to have a balance of that hands-on learning that I was kind of doing with Leah's tech, tech approach. So we want to make sure there's a nice balance of those two. Um, we know we found that technology can help to enhance our inquiry program definitely, and it can also um, supplement our program and solve those problems that I mentioned. Those four big problems like assessment and independent learners. Um, we're finding the text helping, and some of our wonderings that we're still thinking about um, are what apps will accommodate assessment, responsive teaching, independence, and provoking thinking. What what apps um, are best for that? And I'm still wondering what. Leah's mentioned all these different apps, and I probably know two of them, but so I'm still learning um, about how, what these apps are, and I'm just trying to bring the iPad home and kind of fiddling with them and seeing their use and why I'm using it and how it can supplement my program.